We're just a couple of games into this NHL season, and Jeff Petrie has found himself among some elite company. He's in the top 10 in scoring, and uh, he's doing pretty well alongside some other fellow defensemen. I'm talking Quinn Hughes. I'm talking Kale McCarr. I'm talking John Carlson. And uh, if you've checked on social media, there seems to be a growing campaign for Jeff Petrie to win a Norris Trophy. Wow, that trade with Edmonton looks good every day. What has impressed you all the most about Jeff Petrie's play this season? I mean, I have to look at right from the get-go, the start of the season, the way that he's, uh, his speed, I don't know what he did uh, training-wise, but I know he could always skate well, but this year he is really skating well, and I guess it's probably a combination of, he's got a lot of confidence right now in his game, and for a big guy with a, you know, a, a long reach, great shot, this guy has all the tools to, uh, to be an elite defenseman, uh, you know, moving forward. And my goodness, uh, what, a, what a nice uh, asset he is to, to have on the team with the power play and the penalty killing time that he logs. He, he does it all. And he's, uh, you know, he's, he's getting the results uh, by playing as much as he's playing and he's uh, he's rallied and been able to grab a hold of uh, every opportunity and make things happen so what a what a great player for the canadians and i think what helps as well is just the depth that they have on defense where years before it was looked at shea weber and jeff petrie so i yep. think now because he has some help around him that he can maybe do things that he couldn't do before and that he has a, a reliable defense partner as well who's a proven nhl or not necessarily you know a rookie who's coming up or that he has to kind of watch on and i think maybe that could also be a difference with his uh, play this year yeah, the fact he's not a top pairing defenseman might work against them as far as a possible Norris Trophy. He's not playing against the other team's top lines every night, but as a number three guy, wow. I mean, is there a better number three defenseman right now in the NHL? Probably not. Uh, you know, I mentioned Quinn Hughes, who's one point ahead of uh, Petrie, uh, but you no, know, Quinn Hughes is minus seven and, and Jeff Petrie is plus 12. Uh, so Petrie's just in both ends of the ice. And, and the thing with Petrie, he's, uh, people don't realize how strong he is. I think I've mentioned this before on this show. He, he's a physical, like he's in, he's in shape. He's a guy who's ripped. He's really he spends a lot of time in the gym. Uh, that's why that contract extension that Mark Bergeron signed him to before the season. I don't worry about Jeff Petrie with age. You know, as, as Rick was saying, he looks even faster now than he, than he did last season. And uh, he's he's in the gym all the time. He's in fantastic shape. Um, but yeah, I mean, what a what a move by that pass a rank up there is one of Mark Bergeron's best trades. You know, two draft picks uh, for for Petrie and. To Petrie's credit also, he could have left Montreal as a free agent, and he chose to stay here. And, you know, so many free agents don't want to come to Montreal, and here's a guy, his family's embraced it. Uh, they live on the South Shore as a, with a lot of the other families of the Canes who live there, and they've settled into Montreal, and they really like it. So, you know, it's nice to see a player of his quality want to stay in Montreal and perform to the, the high level that he has. His son, Eric, can sing the national anthem in both languages, so maybe he could sing before one of the games. <laughs> Back when we were allowed uh, access, full access to the Bell Center, you know, would show up before the game and you'd see his boys running around crazy while the players were playing soccer before the game and warming up. And uh, Jeff's wife sort of standing in the background going, thank God I get a break from these boys for a few minutes while they <laughs> sleep through the game. And if there's one area of his game that I think that he's improved on is his defensive uh, game. I, I, I find that he's much more responsible defensively. And I think it's, Probably a combination of uh, of his partner Edmondston uh, knowing very well that he's there to back him up in the event that he tries to take a chance offensively. But they also complement complement each other with their size and covering a lot of the uh, uh, defensive zone, uh, you know, play. And uh, just a great, uh, just a great player. And uh, boy, oh boy, it's going to be fun watching him, uh, you know, as as the season goes on. He's also sneaky physical. When you watch the games, watch how many times he knocks a guy on his butt. I think guys don't realize how strong he is. If he catches you with your head down, you're going to pay a price. And he's, he also is very, very effective with his, his stick on the ice. He's got his uh, – the stick is on the ice. It's always in the lanes. He's poking and he's pushing. And, you know, that uh, to me is a, a big bonus for a defenseman to, to understand that, hey, stick in the lane, stick on stick, and make it really tough for the opposition – to do what they want to do with the puck, and he's doing a great job of it. Uh, very quick pop quiz for you all. Who led the Canadians in hits last year? Um, 
Jeff Petrie. <laughs> Jeff Petrie, there we go. You talked about his sneaky physical. This guy leads the team and led the team in hits last year, and he can put up points. He's a really good defenseman. You can make the argument he might be the best defenseman on this team. Who knows? Do you think he's the best defenseman on the Montreal Canadiens? And do you think he has a chance at winning this year's Norris Trophy? Let us know in the comments and visit hockeyinsideout.com to check out our full episode.